I've come to the island of Bernaray, in the centre of the Outer Hebrides, 45 miles off the coast of Western Scotland. Located in the Sound of Harris, the island is inhabited by 130 people and was completely isolated until it became connected to North Uist by a causeway in the 1960s. In 1996, Keith and Sheena spotted this abandoned church while on holiday. Built in 1829, it came with a Grade B listing and tough planning restrictions. I think it's a beautiful island, probably because I've been around that corner many times. You see that the building is there, the feeling of it, it's got a sort of powerful vision there, you know, just on its own. After much wrangling, 14 years later, they bought it in 2010 for £20,000. Never ever thought I'd be living in it for one minute. <laughs> Originally from Edinburgh, but now based in Newcastle, Keith and Sheena hope this will become a new family getaway for their sons, Casey and Lewis, as well as a creative studio for artists to be inspired by the dramatic landscape. It's taken me over 12 hours to get to Burnaway from London, but the scenery is just breathtaking. And you can see that this Telford church was designed to be a bold statement within the landscape. I'm George, nice to meet you. Keith Mac. How are you? Nice to meet you. Right? Hi, Hi Sheena. Sheena. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm well. This is yeah. unbelievably beautiful, isn't it? What a location as well. Yeah. We should go inside and have a look. Come on. Come in. Sitting over 50 feet above sea level in the middle of a working sheep farm known as a croft, the church is 500 yards from the nearest road. And as it's a Grade B listed building, the exterior cannot be changed. With its footprint of 1,400 square feet and no roof, it really is a blank canvas for Keith and Sheena to work with. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's... I mean, all the detailing of the arches over the windows and everything. It's amazing it's still standing, really, when I you know, think being kind I of know. exposed I, to the I, elements. I always think that. Each time we come up, we think, oh, it's still there. <laughs> Why have you bought something like this? It was just that immediate love affair. You know, quite literally, here's a... We never the thought of that neck. time, though, we'd... We well, get it, you know, it's just a sort of wild dream that suddenly has come to a reality. What are you going to do with this building then? What's it going to be for you guys? What's the dream and vision for it? Sort of living space, but also working space, studio space, a space yeah. where people can meet. It's taken three and a half years to buy the church and get planning permission. Now they've got it, Keith and Sheena will need the support of their neighbours if they're to be embraced by this very close-knit community. We're having comers to the island and, and uh, it takes time to sort of build up those relationships and, and uh, one's got to be sensitive to the fact, for instance, that this is a working croft, you know. We're at the height of the lambing season here just now. So, you know, you, you, there's a, it's a big learning curve for us as to what, what's, what can be done at certain times. The inheritance from the recent deaths of Keith's aunt and father just a few months ago has given them a budget of £320,000. It's, it's a great legacy to, to, to them for, for helping us out. Absolutely. Well, it's a legacy to them and uh, it's going to be a kind of built memory to them as well. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 a nice way to think of it, yeah, definitely. This restoration is a real family affair and Sheena's brother Derek is their architect. So we've been highly respectful of the original structure and from the outside it's going to look very like it did when it was a church. We're going to restore the external walls, maintain them, keep all the existing window openings and door openings mm -hmm. and then on the inside it's going to be 21st century. The church has been designed for two uses, as a home and a place for artists to work in. The hallway leads into a double-height open-plan space, including a kitchen and dining area, and raised viewing platform to maximise the views from the windows. Also on the ground floor are a bedroom, utility room, shower room and storage. Two staircases at each end of the building will lead up to the first floor mezzanine level, which curves around the space below and has a further lounge area, leading through to two further bedrooms and a large bathroom. This level faces a large skylight, capturing the views of the bay.
Keith is still grieving after the loss of his father six months ago, but is spurred on by his memory and desire to see this restoration project completed. The sort of dying wishes was that we sort of carried it on and he hoped that it would come to fruition and I think that's, he's, he's never let that go. More than just bricks and mortar, it seems this restoration project is about keeping alive that legacy. He came and sent the property with you, didn't you? I mean, he, he did. Part of that journey. My father was there the first time the hairs went up the back of my neck, and I said, "What? What do you think of the staff down here?" And he just said, "Yeah, go for it." So um, I'm starting to get bubbly here, <laughs> but it's, it's really, really important. Yeah. But you know, it's um, hi. There's a bust that was made of my father when he was a child, just of this little boy. And I'm having a copy of that made. And we're going to have that placed outside just so he's looking out over the sea. It's an emotional project for Keith, which I think is why he's been so committed in reaching the point where the build can begin, three and a half years since he and Sheena first began this restoration journey. Determined to get this project going, Keith has instructed local builder Angus MacDonald to clear the ground inside the church. It's all he can do while waiting for a building warrant, which he needs before he can begin work on the main structure. The family's passion for the building and what they want to do with it is just unbelievable. But what I'm worried about is even though you can celebrate the beauty of this building in the most stunning location, what comes with that is the most brutal and tough weather and they're expecting to get this building project done within a year and even on a day like today which is supposed to be spring we've been absolutely battered just think about what it's going to be like when it gets in the winter